welcome back to another episode of In-Depth. My name is Luke Hardacre and I'm a surf coach at Ombi. If you're new to Ombi, we take a look at surfing from the perspective of ocean, mind, body and equipment. In this podcast, it's all about straight to the point tips, things that you can take away and implement into your surfing or things that make you view your surfing in a different way. This week's episode came from talking to a couple people from the community and it's all about making the most of your surfing and the time you spend training to make sure that are you doing things right. So like most episodes, I'm going to start this with a question and that's do you do any surf training? And if you do, do you ever think, am I doing this right? Do you ever think, should I be doing this differently? Or how can I get the most out of this? Or is it a case of how long should I be doing this? How can I maximize my time spent here and not just waste it? This is so important. We spend time trying to get better and we don't want to waste it. So why then do so many people just end up training and going through the motions. And they're not trying to really cement that training. You're here for a learning experience. When you're trying to improve any skill or sport, it's not like stretching where you can just do. And that's going to give you the benefit. You need to think and ask questions. Play with it and try and feel the differences making sense of those little changes. So this episode, it's all about how you can maximize your time training and get the most out of it so you can progress faster. It's going to be pretty straight to the point and you can implement this straight away. To kick this off though, I really want to dive into what not to do because that's the problem. How do we first get past that? And for most people, they're just blindly doing. They don't think... They just do reps. And sure, that works in some parts of exercise where it's just doing, say, three sets of 10 reps and mix that in to improve your fitness. Great, but you're trying to learn, not improve fitness. Improving your fitness is just a positive side effect. So we want to make the training purposeful. We want to work towards feeling and improving, understanding or having fun with it to work towards a goal. What this is all saying is I don't want you to just to sit there and do. Don't just do something without connecting it to what you're trying to do. So we need to understand this whole learning experience. And if you want to understand the learning experience a bit better, there's a couple other previous podcast episodes you can go back to, which is the four stages of learning new skills or how to ensure you're doing your land-based training properly and not introduce bad habits. Those are two past episodes. They will cement some of this concepts further, whereas this is more the practical application and how you can get through it. So diving into then, how do we improve your time training? And there are three main things you should introduce to your training. Questioning what you're doing, How can you play with that feeling and creating a feedback loop? Those are the three main things. That's the bulk of it and all you need to do. The first one really needs to focus on how can you connect the movement to your mind? And we do this by questioning what you're doing. And you're trying to connect these movements with an understanding of surfing or whatever it is you're doing. This isn't unique to surfing. This is just unique to any other learning experience when you're trying to do something. How is, what is the outcome of this action? How does this impact? So you want to be asking questions like, what is this movement or thing I am training? How does it impact my surfing? If I move like this, how will my board respond? There are endless questions you can ask. And you may not have the right answer straight away. 
And that's going to lead you to then play with the feeling and figure it out. This is also going to trigger you to connect that movement to theory and deeper understanding, or it's going to push you to go find the answers and understand surfing better. I can't stress how important this is just to take that moment to think about what you're doing and what's the outcome you're trying to achieve. Following this, we need to start playing with the feeling. And this is something you've probably heard a million times on this podcast. And it's when you start asking these questions and your goal is just to feel something, you can begin to play. And when we play, the stakes are lower and we enable ourselves to learn so much faster. It's not about outcomes or winning. It's just about having a good time. It's a whole other podcast about that, which is titled What the Groms Have That We Don't. And your goal when playing with it is to find the extremes, the good and the bad, and then find that sweet spot so that you're modifying the movement so that it feels horrible. You make it feel bad. You make it suck. And then ask yourself, why does that suck? Why does that feel so bad? And then you want to modify it to feel better. You want to go from one extreme to the other so that you have a big polarity and can understand those differences. An understanding of the training and theory is going to help at this point, which is where we have our training programs that you can dive into. And this may not always be there. You may not have the answers straight away, but you want to start playing with it. If you don't know what's good and what's bad, just make an assumption, change one thing at a time and go from there. So you can start creating this loop, a cycle of making movements slightly better each time and asking yourself the following questions. How did that feel? How did I move? Why did that feel better? And what was different about that? Again, you're not going to always have the answers, but it makes you curious and forces you to find out. What you end up working towards is this is the perfect version, say pop-up or stance, and you work around why is it good to do it that way and why is it bad to do it another way? What's different? If you don't understand why, it's Good to be in a neutral stance versus, say, Pumen. How do you expect that to change in your surfing? If you don't fundamentally know the difference, but you're trying to change it, it's very hard to enact that change. If you take this outside of surfing and you say, why is it good for me to stop smoking? Why is it good for me to spend 30 minutes a day running? And you can't answer those questions. You're not likely to make the change or have the desire, and that's a whole other ball game in terms of, I guess, personal development of why we do things. But if you can't connect all the dots, you're not going to be able to make the change, show up, turn up, do it. This is the same with cutbacks and unlocking the front arm, getting it out of the way. If you don't understand why that will stop your cutback, and how to make the movement feel better, how do you expect to do a better cutback? These are questions for you to ask yourself and try and figure it out. Your play starts here. This is you trying to put theory into practice and figure it out. The next step with playing it is just mixing it up and doing things differently. This is exactly what you want to do in the skate ramps. If you're surf skating, to improve your surfing. Unless you've figured out exactly what to do and know why, as well as knowing the feeling you're chasing in that movement, I suggest you start mixing it up. What this means is that you need to try different things. Instead, most people, and this is where they go wrong, just blindly keep doing the same thing over and over and then wonder, why is this not getting better? Why am I not getting it? What don't I understand? Don't try the same thing every time. Mix in something to tweak it. Make one small change. But just remember, keep it to that one thing at a time so you can actually attribute the change to that one thing 
instead of having to figure out what caused the difference among five changes. The final piece to this in terms of getting more out of your training and maximizing your time is creating a feedback loop. This sounds obvious, but so many people don't do it. It takes so little time and the impact on your surfing is huge. You need a feedback loop as well as asking yourself the questions. By feedback, I mean a video feedback loop. And any of your training can be filmed and should be. Your surfing doesn't need to be. No need to add pressure to that session. Just every so often is good. If you can get some footage of your surfing, it's good to see what you're actually doing in the surf and what you're not. The point being is if you ask questions and explore that feeling, that's one part. If you have a video, it's undeniable. If it looks awkward, it will have felt awkward and vice versa. The camera doesn't lie and it's going to kill the ego very quickly. It will also show you what's happening, what you may not notice or feel, as well as how it may send messages to your board. This is so important. It's a moment to pause. Ask the questions and connect the theory and develop your understanding deeper. If you just do things, you're not making the time to question it and learn. You're missing out on a vital piece of the learning experience to try and better yourself. So at this point, we've got three things to work on. We want to question it, we want to play with it, and we want a feedback loop so we can review it and take that moment to pause, ask the questions, see what's going on and how that connects with what questions we're asking, what we're trying, and this will fill in the clues of what to do. But how do we put that into practice so that we minimize our time? And this is where we want to use cyclic training and video feedback. So as I said before, ideally, any land-based training you, should, you do, you should be implementing this, especially when you're starting a new movement. You can easily film anything you do with a phone and then review it. If you feel like you can't get a tripod for your phone or put it up next to a bag, a shoe, whatever, there's anything to prop your phone up. The benefit to this is the feedback loop is pretty much about five minutes long and allows you to progress and make changes rapidly rather than compounding bad habits by not getting that feedback. So here's how to implement this. I want you to set up your phone to film the training. Make sure that you can get at the angles in, see what you need to see. You then need to do three to five attempts at this movement or a minute or two if it's a quick movement. You just need a couple examples to see. Then you need to come back to the camera and review. You need to identify awkward movements and then you need to ask the questions of how you moved. How did that feel? And as you're going through this, think about how can you make this better? And then when you've identified this, you just need to make one adjustment to the movement and start the whole cycle again. And that's it. In five minutes, you've identified one little issue that you can work on and then implement that little fix and go again. If you think about that in the context of 10 to 30 minutes of training, you could have a major breakthrough. You could have the one connection that you've been struggling to understand, or you're working out the kinks that have been holding you back. It's so quick to implement and do, takes little energy and gives you so much more. Where instead, if you spend two hours without any feedback coming back to yourself, you're not really sure what's working and what's not. The learning isn't being brought back in because there's no critique, there's no feedback. It's a slower progression. Using this cyclic system and feedback loop, it's going to kill any ego. It's going to constantly push you to keep playing 
asking questions, finding that feeling or making it better is going to make you curiosity driven. This constant, I guess, carrot on a stick that pushes us forwards. What's next? What's next? How can I find the next little high? Or how can I excite myself? What can I change? It adds new levels of fun. If you do get frustrated, that's where you just need to scale it back and focus on like, if I'm getting frustrated, maybe I just need to take a breath, go have some fun, just reset. You don't want the frustration to compound, which can negatively impact how you move, tension, stress. You've heard it all before in this podcast. (laughs) So then, how long should you train for and how much time to invest in your training to get the most out of it? And most times, to be honest, it really doesn't matter. It what It's what suits you. Two minutes, five, 10, 30, 60 minutes, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what you get out of the time you invest. And as previously mentioned, making it purpose, purposeful is more important, not just doing things blindly. If you do them in cycles, it can just be two or five cycles. It, entirely up to you. You can train a movement every time you walk around your house or make that time in your lunch break or every afternoon. It really doesn't matter. It's not about reps. It's about being in search of the feeling and deciding how long to go for that suits you, your schedule, and how you learn. A couple minutes a day is great. Or three cycles if you want a rough answer to that. You just need a couple cycles to get some feedback and find one change in making something just marginally better, say 1% better every day. What not to do is train too long where you start declining and you end up chasing your tail. This is especially a problem in skating where you get fatigued and you can't perform as well. As this could invite an injury, only you will know when that is. But the idea is there's no right or wrong answer. It's so nuanced in terms of what you're doing, how quick you learn, and what's going on in your life. In summary, don't just blindly do. Think, ask questions. Connect the movement to theory and your understanding of surfing and figure out how that movement will impact your surfing. Play with the movement and focus on making the movement slightly better each time and asking yourself, how did that feel? How did I move? Why did it feel better? What was different about that? Answers won't always come to you and the feedback loop and cyclic training will help identify the answers as well as giving you the vital feedback to keep progressing. If you're time sensitive, three cycles of any movement is a great rough amount of time, probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, let the time be based on how much time you have or how well you learn and what suits you. Is this something you're going to incorporate into your training from now on? Does it feel like a much easier way to progress your surfing and maximize your training time? Is it something you already do? This is a big thing that people neglect in their skating. And a lot of times they come back with comments like when they see their own footage, it's like, am I really going that slow? And it's like, yeah, that's how slow you're going and that's how you're moving. And negating that feedback loop really just lets yourself down in terms of how quickly you want to improve and what's the pace you want to set. So I'd love to know, you can reach out anytime you can either message me in the Ombi app, which if you don't have that already, you can, it's completely free. You can find all the details in the show notes. Otherwise, you can always email us at info at ombi.co. Next week, I'm going to dive into the mental side of surfing and why it can be so hard to sometimes overcome these issues, see progress, And what you can do to help get over these humps. And this is a topic that I saw in the community app where, forgive me for getting whose name it was, made this post 
in a moment of like frustration and there were some really good answers and I'm going to dive into that so we can share that conversation a little bit more because it's so important to how much pressure we put on ourselves and how we, again, building off this episode here of how we get the most of our training and when we actually go out to implement it in the surf, why is it so frustrating that we want to implement these things and it doesn't happen? And this kind of also links back to the previous week's episode and how the body lags the mind and that we go out with this expectation of, I get it, I get it, but my body does not follow and what the hell is going on? If you've been enjoying these podcasts, it would mean a lot to us if you left a review. You can leave a review wherever you're getting your podcast from. Or if there's an episode you think a friend should hear, we'd love for you to share it around. If you're new to Ombi and this sounds really exciting to improve your surfing, there's a whole bunch of links in the show notes. You can find our free community app. All of these podcasts are also written up so you have a full guide with images and whatever else needs to accompany it. You'll find them every week under every episode. You'll find a ton of other guides and a whole search function to find whatever you want. There's something of about 200 guides on the website. If you want to improve your surfing, you can start a 14-day free trial and this will give you instant access to all of our training programs. There's a beginner's structured training program. There's an intermediate structured training program. And there's also our monthly challenges, which every month we dive into a new maneuver and give structured training for beginners, intermediates and advanced to work on that maneuver. As I said, next week, we'll be going into the mental side of surfing and why it can be so hard and frustrating. So until then, I'll see you next time.